All right, folks, welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show, and I am very happy to uh, welcome back to the show. Um, I, I guess we're about uh, still over a month in advance of, uh, of uh, the book she's co-writing with her, her husband, James Carville. We welcome back Mary Matlin, political consultant, of course, who advised uh, many uh, Republican presidents, both Bushes and, uh, and President Reagan. Hello, Mary. Happy Thanksgiving, Steve. Yeah, wow, I Thanksgiving. Sit home and bake. We've been baking cookies and. Oh, you see, you can't do that to me. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a divorced guy. Nobody's baking in my house. I'll send you a pumpkin loaf. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Listen, there's so much to talk about. Um, I, I don't even know where to start, but let's start with the newest polls. And, uh, you know, CNN is really like they're all crying, uh, walking around crying. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the new generic ballot, which uh, congr congressional generic ballot, has Republicans actually overtaking Democrats, which is quite a turnaround in a very short amount of time. As the, is the turnaround on trustworthiness and honesty for President Obama. And am I right? Does it all stem from if you like your insurance, you could keep your insurance and the whole debacle? Yes. And going back and looking at polls over time, which is the best way to do it, there was never, this was never about health care, and there was never a mandate for health care. Majorities during 2008 campaign and up until today always thought it was not the government's role to provide health care and some 90 percent were happy with the health care that they had so there was never a mandate it was never about health care it was about as you know the progressive endless desire to take more control over our lives what, what, what sustained obama even though consistent majorities and super majorities opposed and intensely opposed his signature domestic issue was his likability is his empathy, his that's why he overcame Romney on those those so called character attributes. Well, losing credibility, losing trust, losing empathy are it's a death knell and the political consequences to the whole Democratic Party are are evident by the behavior of the Democrats who are running away from all of this. Now what concerns me in a larger uh, arena is that Republicans Oh, they they go wobbly. I mean, I wish there was a Thatcher around, so it's a <laughs> Thatcher angel to say, don't go wobbly. We either believe, as we did when not a single Republican voted for the Affordable Care Act, and then act on it, instead of believing the ephemeral uh, attributes that 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 are not about policy. They're about personal popularity, which doesn't translate into. Policy popularity. All right. So, what do you what what do you say? You fear them going wobbly in what respect? In other words, passing an extension of some sort. What what do you what what would you urge them to do? I don't even like the uh, Republicans signing on to the let's delay the individual mandate. Let's not do anything that is a fix. Let the thing fall apart. No Republicans voted for it. Let the thing unfold in the way that it can and keep saying what's wrong with it. Now we have even mainstream. Reporters like Halpern saying there are death panels. Well, yeah, that's interesting, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Halpern said that on my show yesterday, and um, and now Halpern is tweeting out. Uh, just uh, for your information, in Monday interview, I did not say death panels, nor do I believe ACA contains them. Was speaking of policy, uh, political policy challenge of IPAB cuts. My bad. Um, I I mean, I, as a matter of fact, do you mind if we if we play that? Yeah, go oh, ahead. Okay, Let's where where about... where is that? Let me see. I got to find it real quick. Um, I think we do. Oh, you know what? We might not. I might not have. Uh, I intended to do that. But I don't have it, so we can't play it. But I did say. I said. So you're saying that the uh, that Obamacare contains um, uh, rationing, aka death panels, and he said it's built into Obamacare to the Affordable Care Act. So uh, you know, there it is. And he, he went on to say. We need to have this discussion because too much money is spent on end-of-life care. I mean, this is nuts. Well, what's nuts is the, is the linguistic contortionism to say in, in every particular in substance that it, there, it is true that we, that 80 percent, or um, these numbers are rough, 80 percent of our medical dollars go to 20 percent of end-of-life issues, okay? That's, that is an issue. The, the question is, do Americans want the government to just make those decisions right. or their own families? My father decided when it was his time to go. My mother decided when both of them had cancer and after they 
fought it. They didn't want to burden their families any further. I would like to make that decision for myself. Right. I don't want the government to tell my kids that, or anybody, I don't want anybody telling anybody how to make those decisions. No, Mary, we, we live our lives to live as long as we can and to prolong our parents' lives and, and, and take care. Listen, I, I did do it. I, I'm cracking up. Here's the cut from yesterday. Um, you know, I think they focused on the death panels, which which will be coming. Call them what you will. Rationing no, I, is, is part I, I, of it. And I'd have I a, agree. It's huge. It's going to be a huge issue. And that's something else about which the president was not fully forthcoming and, and straightforward. Right, so you believe that there will be rationing, a.k.a. death panels? It's built into the plan. It's not it's not like it's not like a guess or like a judgment. That's 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 going to be part of how can costs are controlled. Yeah. OK, well, but but, 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 I, but I'll say something else about that issue, which is. We do need to do some of that in this country because we can't afford to spend so much on end-of-life care. A very high percentage of our health care spending is for a very small number of people well, at the last stages of their life. I'm not saying the system shouldn't allow that, but, but, but there's too much cost there. Judgments have to be made. We have this society. Made by who, Mark? Society. Mark, made by who? The government? By by, no, by individuals. But it's not going to be made by individuals. If you say well, it's included well, in the health care if but you, it's not now. It's not now. For many people who have insurance, their insurance companies make those. Decisions. But they don't. All right. So anyway, we went on. But but so he did say there are death panels, right? I mean, he didn't say the words, but he said, yeah, it's in the bill. Well, one thing you can't get anyone besides a handful of us to ever do is use the same language that Sarah Palin used. Right. Just, no one wants to be accused of that, but that's exactly what they are. In, an, in, an, in addition to rationing, there is doctor incentive. There's incentives for doctors and other health care providers and nurses to encourage end-of-life patients to right. cut, cut short their yep. lives. So there's all sorts of things baked into the cake that, are, that go to human behavior. They just don't want to use the language. I think that's why conservatives get so, get so frustrated and why they get frustrated at their own people because just, if, just using – if just not saying the language doesn't make it not true or saying the language doesn't make it untrue right, i mean right. it's just it's too i just keep getting back to policy and philosophy and how did this country get to to the best health care system in the world and when things are broken how do we fix them and what's the how do we through the wisdom of the ages fix things on a on a what needs to be fixed without throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It's the same arguments you we've been having for a thousand years. Uh, more than a thousand yeah, years. Yeah, we're talking a time. We're talking to Mary Matlin, uh co author of, of uh, a brand new book coming out with uh, her husband James Carville and that's coming out in January, right? Uh you know what I'm so happy to be done with it. I don't even know. Why. <laughs> I think it's Thank Chad. You just keep bringing it up. No, because we're gonna have it. we're gonna have you guys on. And and oh. I, I asked Chad, and I think he said it's January. I said, is she on today for the book? He said, no, January. Anyway, so just you know, I don't I don't really fully trust Chad, my producer. So that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> no, only kidding. Uh, well, but, but, I don't know if Chad. T- I don't know what we're doing. And <laughs> okay. I just live in the moment, and in the moment, I'm baking pumpkin. I know you I told me. I can. You know, now I could. I got news for you, Mary. Now I could smell it coming through the microphone. <laughs> that's how. That's how psyched out you got me now uh, and and plus i forgot what question i was going to ask you um but uh, nonetheless uh, uh, talking about obama oh yeah the republicans um and, and and going forward you know you and i you and i discussed this you know getting the message out strategizing playing the democrats game you know when when the senate wouldn't take up the bill pad the piecemeal bills passed by the house during the, the close the shutdown uh for instance to fund the national institute of health for kids with cancer why did the republicans go get a family who was outraged and had a kid with cancer and bring them to the steps and have a press conference and say, look, Harry Reid and the president said no to this boy. Why not? What's wrong with them? And when it was all over, I don't know if we spoke since it was all over. I don't think so. Why didn't they say, instead of saying, we, we lost, we tried our best, blah, blah. Why didn't they say, yeah, we gave in. We gave in to save America from a president who, un- in an unprecedented fashion, would not talk with us and was willing to risk default, quote, unquote, over something as simple as delaying the medical device tax. So, yeah, we gave up, but we gave up to save America. Instead, we lost, we tried. I don't get them. Because you're you're making my point. They I know I am. So th- there's such a gravitational pull to believe all the headlines that that bounce around in the echo chamber. And if you're not if you're living your life in the real world and you ignore those headlines and and talk to real people, you'll see that's not what they're concerned about. 
I think we did discuss the the legacy paranoia from 1994. We thought we took a yes. bullet for for the shutdown. We did not. We gained two Senate seats, yep. and a lot has changed since. And people want the government to stop, stop them, and they want the feds to stop. It does. It's not an anti-government. I'm just that we got to get out of this defensive crouch, and and we that we have the support of super majorities. We have. Almost 80 percent support on these uh, life issues, on cultural issues. Absolutely, and we don't speak to them. Look, here's another opportunity. I hope we don't mess up. Obamacare is is assaulted the very essence of who we are. It's assaulted our very first freedom, religious freedom, and the Supremes are now going to take up that aspect of it. And it's an opportunity for us to take a stand for freedom of speech, freedom of religion. You don't have to be a person of faith to take up for the First Amendment. And you know how the left is spinning this today? They're saying, oh, this is great, because now the Democrats could point out how the Republicans are against women and contraception and how they want to penalize women for being women. And, and you know what? That's a losing argument if, as you say, it's confronted by us, by the Republicans. But I don't know that they have the wherewithal to do it. Well, they, there are people who can do it, and I, I'm happy to say, although I don't like to segregate out, the women in the Republican caucus, who a uh, majority of have been have been elected in the last two cycles, Tea right. Party women, they that's their last concern: free contraception, or three cents a pill, or whatever. If you even want to be, but what they really do care about, even if they're pro-choice, is the government forcing employers or, or businesses or faith groups to provide funding for abortions and contraception when it defies their their rights they're under the constitution absolutely they, they can make that point but you you are right and we're making the same point so for that i'm most grateful you're one of my blessings steve on this oh please day. thank you that's that's awfully nice of you to say but so are you it goes both ways because uh I pound my head against the wall, and you know sometimes I think uh, maybe somebody should hire me as a consultant one day. I, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. And, and, and it's comforting to hear someone of your stature uh, you know, saying uh, that we're thinking alike, and that's very comforting to me that there are people out there with the influence, as such as yourself, and hopefully we'll have the right ears uh, come, come the time. I and, have no influence, and do not <laughs> underestimate your influence. Well, I, with a microphone and the reach of... Newsmax, that's that's why we were able to get even as far as we got with the well, thank funding you. Strategy. And by the way, you have plenty of influence over James. You tell him he's not getting, not getting any cookies unless, you know, he does what you want. <laughs> unless he stuffs my turkey that, right, that, huh? <laughs> That's it. Hey, I've, I've never talked with him, but I look forward to that one day, too. Hey, thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful holiday, and thank you for taking the time. You too, Steve. You too, Chad. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye-bye. Mary Matlin, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Steve Malsberg Show. All right, when we come back, I, I want to talk a little bit more about um, – uh, about um, uh, the, 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 the denial of Mark Halpern, who we are inviting back to come on this show tomorrow. If he wants to come back on and deny he said what he said, I'm, I don't want to fight with him. I'm not going to fight with him. I welcome him to come on. I'd love to have the discussion.